What's up everyone? D Crack here. Well, all right guys, Mr. Nightmare. It's been a while since I've reacted to some Mr. Nightmare and I've seen a lot of you guys in the comments saying, "Hey D Crack, why aren't you reacting to Mr. Nightmare?" Well, here I am reacting to some Mr. Nightmare for you guys. Four true scary stories with footage. Like always, link to the original video down below. Make sure and go check out Mr. Nightmare. I'm sure most of you guys know who he is by now. Um, but yeah, four true scary stories with footage. Let's go. Story one. It was January of 2016. My buddies and I live right next to a nature preserve and used to love to explore it. It was a weekend and we were looking for something to do. And being mischievous, we decided to go explore the storm drain that supplied water to the creek in the nature preserve. It had a barred barricade blocking entry into it. Storm drain? Oh no, this is going to be some Pennywise crap right here. <laughs> Stay away from the storm drains. <laughs> So we decided we'd throw some rocks in to see if the rocks made contact at any point oh, so we could no. figure out the depth. However, we if received you see a red balloon, return. get the hell out of there. After throwing a rock against the wall in the storm drain, a couple seconds passed, and we heard a terrifying thump or a bang in return. What the hell? <laughs> Dusk was approaching, what? so we called it a day and watched back over the video we recorded of it. The next weekend, I gathered a few more buddies, and we decided we would unbolt the barricade to the drain and go inside. I got the barricade to- Yo, what the hell are you thinking? Did I just hear that right? Unbolt the barricade and go inside? You guys want to die? Oh, hell no. <laughs> There's some weird sound down in this st storm drain. Hey, let's, let's go in it. Sounds like fun fall down and oh my god it went in about 20 feet until it hit a dead end however there was a second branch of the drain to our left that we'd have to take a step up to get into oh we hell no i'm not going one, in there no nope. five of us at first it was nothing but spider webs and mud we traveled about 500 to a thousand feet into the drain as it kept getting skinnier and we had to duck to proceed we were all frozen in our tracks as we heard the same exact thump we heard the weekend before. A scary and hard to describe sound. We had no signal and were beyond terrified oh, at that no. point because we were all right next to each other and the noise had come from much further away. At this point my friend decided to start recording in case anything else happened. Oh no. We made it out of the drain safely without anything else happening. The scariest and most chilling part of this whole story was when I reviewed the video and saw a slight outline of a head at one of the turns of the drain. This couldn't possibly have been one of us because we had all been together. I took a screenshot of it and zoomed in as far as I could. And well, I was horrified. There in the frame was- That does not, it, it almost looks human, but at the same time, it doesn't look human. It's got, its head looks way too big. It's got like a huge nose. What is it, like a freaking troll living in the storm drain? The hell is that? It's a demon shaped looking head with glowing eyes and what appeared to be pointy ears. To this oh, day, I've no. never gone back into that nature preserve, let alone the storm drain. Nope. Just no. Story number two. My name is Chills. It all started when a group of friends and I decided to start exploring abandoned warehouses due to the stories and myths surrounding them in our hometown, Laredo, Texas. The story surrounding the area of warehouses was that the buildings were haunted due to immigrant workers being worked and mistreated to death. The local news covered That's the death terrible. of many of the workers. Many of the deaths were also ignored by the authorities due to the illegal status of the workers. In the warehouse that we visited, the company was in charge of the maintenance of the railroad tracks as well as the disposing of hazardous material. In the video I recorded, the barrels filled with chemical wastes are seen spilled open. The warehouses are located in a part of town where there's nothing really around except for train tracks. The predominantly Hispanic culture of my city gave rise to the stories about railroad workers that had lost their lives in the area. We decided to explore the warehouse during the day and then during the night. 
On our daytime exploration, we found remains of what seemed to be remnants of satanic rituals because we found a chicken's foot and pentagrams drawn in permanent- A chicken's foot? I'm sorry, I just have to laugh. What the hell is a chicken's foot have to do with the ritual? Oh, crap. Parker. We figured Freaking that was the work of foot. local groups trying to communicate with the damned souls of the workers. We also spotted a makeshift couch or bed where the workers would sleep. The night we visited, we had the feeling we were being watched. We were actually also being followed and attacked by crows inside the building. Oh, no, man. <laughs> this one? That would scare the crap out of me, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my god. While we were exploring that night, on several occasions, we spotted shadows and heard noises throughout the area. As we delved deeper, we got the feeling that someone or something didn't want us in the warehouse. A creepy laugh can be heard in the video footage I captured, and that was our cue to get the hell out. Nah, I don't think there's no power. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just get out of here. Yeah, I think it's time to go. Things only got weirder though, as the satanic drawings and the chicken foot were gone the next time we passed that spot. What? They were spotted only earlier that day. I'm completely convinced that someone or something was stalking us in that warehouse that night. I believe the lost souls oh, of the workers no. or a satanic group of people that frequented the place were there that night with us, watching. As we walked out of the warehouse, we noticed that the crows were very on edge and tried to attack us, like I mentioned earlier. The events that happened that night still sometimes keep me up at night. Oh, that's... No. Get away from that freaking chicken's foot. I'm a freshman at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Some friends of mine came home from a hockey party after their game and asked me to come hang at their dorm. They brought some girls to the party that they knew from high school and happened to be in the city. They came back to the dorm to hang as well. One of the girls that came in was super friendly but very drunk. I didn't see her drink anything in the dorms. I left with my girlfriend at about 2 a.m. At around 3, I heard sirens and could see lights outside of my window. I figured it was just another kid that came home with alcohol poisoning. Then I heard the most alcohol poisoning. Scream of my life. Jeez, how much did you drink? I walked out of my room and saw my friends from the dorm I had just left running down the hall wanting my help. I started running down the hall following them and saw blood on the floor and thought for sure someone had been stabbed. Then I saw three police officers and a paramedic team strapping the friendly girl down to a stretcher while she was screaming and thrashing. I went to ask my friends what happened and they looked exhausted. They said her eyes rolled back into her head. She started growling and bleeding heavily from- Uh, she's freaking possessed. Time to get a priest. She needs an exorcism. She's freaking possessed. Tell you that both nostrils Tell you that much she attacked some of our friends yanking their hair and what biting the them like frick? an animal this girl fought off three six foot tall fairly muscular guys by herself keep in mind this girl is probably five foot one she's 100 percent possessed by a demon strength yep. all while screaming at the top of her lungs the scariest part is when the ra came over to pray over the situation as he's a devoted christian and she started screaming f god f jesus the devil is coming for you all at this point, my heart was sinking in pure fear of the situation, as was- Dang, that just gave me chills. By the way, guys, I'm reacting to this video at 1.14 a.m., so either really early in the morning or really late at night. For me, it feels late at night, but um, I don't know if this is the best time to react to these videos before I go to bed in a little bit, but... um, Everyone else who was present. The emergency responders said they had never seen anything like this, even if she was possibly drugged at the party. I was able to capture a roughly 20 second video of her screaming in the door. Oh god, this is going to be really disturbing. The paramedics are in the way, but if you listen closely towards the end of the video, you can hear her scream, they're coming for you all, they're coming for you next. Last I heard, she woke up with no memory of the situation, but is in a very dark place at the moment. This is the video that was captured. Oh god. <laughs> Hey, 
she was 100% possessed by a demon or something evil. You can tell in her voice, they're coming for you all. Either she was possessed or she was having a very serious mental breakdown. But they're coming for you all. Ugh. That gives me freaking chills. Story four. In my small town, there's not much to do. So my friends and I make the best of it. And in the winter, we sometimes throw snowballs at cars. This was after we got done ice fishing one day. We went to my house and decided it would be fun to throw snowballs at cars for a while. <laughs> Usually no one would get too angry as Jeez. they were just snowballs. But one person got really mad at us. My friend Drake decided to throw a snowball at one Probably more car not the and best he told me idea. to record. <laughs> he hit right under the back passenger side. Probably not it the best like idea. A hard hit. We stayed there for a second, laughing, until he slowed down and eventually threw it in reverse. Oh crap. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I would probably be a little pissed if a kid threw snow at my vehicle. That wasn't just a, I mean, that wasn't just a little snowball. That was like a huge clump of snow that he threw at that truck. I'd be a little annoyed. I don't think I would throw my truck or car in reverse and, you know, go yell at the kids, but I would be a little annoyed. <laughs> not going to lie. He's right there. Oh, they messed with the wrong guy. They messed with the wrong guy. We ran and hid behind a car in a different parking lot, and he pulled in about five feet from us, but he didn't see us. So we ran home, and that's when I stopped recording. When we got home, we took off our jackets and sat down to watch the video I just took, but we were interrupted by this sound. The dude followed them home? I froze in my seat. Then again. I didn't Yo. think this guy would find us. But still, I turned off the lights. How did he find their house? Crazy. Drake and I are 14. We don't get scared that easily. But this was freaking us out. We hid in my bathroom in my room and turned off the light. We actually laughed, thinking he would leave in a couple minutes. Our friends thought we were joking. So we took videos of him still pounding on the door. Our friends thought it was funny and karma, but we didn't find it amusing anymore. We thought we were in danger because he wouldn't leave. So I Dude, called just mom, leave. It's just Walmart snow. 10 minutes away. I know it's annoying, but just more leave. Like she was angry at us for throwing snowballs at cars than concerned that someone was banging on the door. She said she would call one of the neighbors to come scare him off. Then she hung up. It felt like an eternity before he stopped banging on the front door. But only a couple minutes passed, and then the banging sounds came from a different door. Then it hit me that I didn't lock that door, and he could easily come in. Oh no! I got a disturbing call from my mom, telling me one of the neighbors said she could see a deranged looking man, possibly drugged out, looking through my room's window and the front door window. We sat there for as long as we could, and decided to make a plan to get the 410 shotgun in my mom's room, load it, and then make a break for it. But when we entered my mom's room to look for the gun, we saw his face at the window. His hairy, withered looking face. And we screamed and ran. They messed with the Drake wrong had the dude. Idea to blast a police siren sound on my speaker in my room, so we ran to set the speaker up. While doing so, we heard the back door open, the one which was left unlocked. No, Drake no, no. Drake managed to get the siren sound effect to play on my speaker, and that apparently worked, as we heard him leave through the same door he entered. Moments later, one of the neighbors, Paul, rang the doorbell. But now he knows where you live. Inside, and he stayed with us and waited for the cops. And oh my, my God! Go we explained everything. The cops and my mom all said we shouldn't have been throwing snowballs at cars like that. Well, obviously. Obvious, yeah, and obviously. <laughs> that they showed up when they did. My advice is to never mess with people like we did. You never know who you're dealing with. Oh my God, these these kids got lucky. These kids got freaking lucky. I mean, like. 
like they said in the video, and I said, obviously they shouldn't have been throwing snow at cars. Because first of all, it's rude, and second, you know, you don't know who's driving the vehicle. And obviously this one dude here wasn't messing around, even though it was just snow. For some reason, he took it personally, but these kids really brought it on themselves, throwing the snow. But then at the same time, this dude shouldn't, he shouldn't have taken it that far to bang on the door, open the door at one point. That's just going way too far over freaking snow. Now, if someone threw like a rock, if someone threw like a rock or something at a vehicle and let's say it broke a window or left a huge dent in, or damage the vehicle, yeah, then maybe you should go knock on the house and try to talk to an adult or figure out who just damaged your vehicle. But just over snow... That's going way too far. But guys, this was four true scary stories with footage by Mr. Nightmare. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, make sure and leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. If you guys want to help support the channel and become a channel member, just click the join button down below. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.